In this video, we're going to be using First Line Shave Del Mar Boulevard, which you can see right there, and the usual suspect for head shaving, Leaf. Stay tuned. Hey there, folks, and welcome back for another video. I'm your host, CDB. Thanks so much for joining me again today. I really appreciate it. So, as mentioned before, today we're going to be doing a shave with First Line Shave. This is Del Mar Boulevard, and I received a sample with my order the last time I ordered. Thank you very much, First Line Shave. Um, and this is a soap that I didn't know about, but now that I've lathered it, and I do have it lathered up, it smells very, very nice. Um, gotta smell it. it. Smells nice. I couldn't tell much out of the sample, just out of this little package, but when it lathers, it really pops. And this is based on, I wrote it down, uh, this is based on a fragrance called Bleecker Street. And some of the notes, I'll put them there for you. Violet, blueberry, thyme, oak moss, vanilla. Complex, but to me, it pops. It's bright. Now, the cost on this soap, this is not an inexpensive soap to buy. Uh, this runs about $23 for four ounces, and that is $5.75 an ounce on a cost chart, which puts it in the pricey realm, as far as I'm concerned, uh, for soaps. Now, I will say, first line shave, Donates a dollar from every tub to backstoppers.org, and that aid goes directly to families of fallen first responders. So you can take that into effect, and if you do, that brings the price down a little bit, but it's still in that pricey realm. So this is not a soap that I would take a flyer on. I have to be sure that I like a scent when I spend this kind of money for soap. Um, the ingredients on this soap, really, really nice. It To me, in the ingredients and performance, it reminds me of... Stinky Pete's uh, latest base, Kaizen. It makes a very creamy lather. It's got some great ingredients. Goat's milk, aloe, cocoa butter, jojoba, vitamin vitamin E, cocoa butter. Um, they've been on the screen there in case you didn't see them. Really nice ingredients, really creamy lather. Reminds me a lot of Kaizen. Okay, let's go ahead and wet the dome here. This will be a head shave with the Leaf Derby Premium Blades in here today. And let's wet the dome and get started. Our brush today is the PAA Amber, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Amber Aerolite, and I apologize for that. Let me get a towel to wipe my hands off, just a second. All right, and we're back. I just wanted to wipe the handle off because I got a little bit of soap on it. The PAA Aero Amber Light, which is a nice brush now for sale. Now, Mary the Bar Marion the Barbarian, let me slow down a little bit, mentioned the other day that where this piece comes along with that piece, there's a little bit of white next to that piece. And I commented on his video and said, mine isn't that way. And then upon further examination, there is a little bit of that, which you might be able to see right there. I don't really know what that is, but I'm sure I can get it out if I want to. So just be aware if that's the type of thing that bothers you. And apologies, Marion. I responded on your thread without actually looking at the brush because I didn't notice it until Marion brought it up. But once these things do come to light, it is imperative uh, that we mention it to the viewers because, you know, that might be something that bothers you. I don't know that all of them are that way. I have no way of knowing, but keep that in mind. This brush runs about, I think, $19.95 or somewhere thereabouts. I do like the knot. This is a, um, I think he calls it Stygian knot. It's brand new from PAA. I like the handle. Um, it's not too heavy, but it's got some size to it. I do like the brush, and it was sent to me by... PAA for evaluation. I did not notice that um, it's it's very small and it, if I hadn't been looking for it, I wouldn't have noticed because maybe, you know, I don't look uh, maybe in as much detail as MTB does wearing <laughs> the Barbarian. So thank you, Mary, for pointing that out. And again, if I become aware of something, I'll certainly let you know, but it's not a problem for me for, for whatever that is worth. Okay, let's get going and again, uh, this smells nice. It really pops when you lather it. So sometimes you get something in a sample form or even out of the jar. And maybe it's not all that impressive at first. And then when you lather it, it comes to life. And I would say for me, this is one of those products that really comes to life when you lather it. The quality, I've used, uh, this is the 3.0 formula from First Line Shave. It is a quality base. Again, pricey, you know, as far as it goes, but for folks who are out for the for the latest and greatest ingredients and bases, and for folks who that's very important to, this may be one 
that you consider um, trying. I certainly think it's worthy of uh, trying a first line shave uh, soap. If you're one of those folks who are really concerned with trying, you know, what I would consider a premium type of uh, soap, again, you know, based based on the ingredients, very, very good ingredients. And again, it reminds me a lot in the way it behaves and performs of Kaizen. Now, Kaizen is generally cheaper. Um, and, you know, this might be one we have to put head to head <laughs> with Kaizen to see. Honestly, I don't know if I'd be able to tell enough difference between the two to put one way over the other. I, I think they're similar. Uh, one is a little bit cheaper. Um, that would be Kaizen, uh, especially if you're in the shaving shop club. So it'll come to you at a, at a better price. Again, if that's if you're a budget-minded person. But I will say, I have really been enjoying these soaps from First Line Shave and, and most of the scents. Um, Fallout I did not <laughs> like, but uh, since then, I've had some hits. Like I just recently ordered the blue. Um, I have the red, Razor Ruby. And this is one, quite, quite frankly, based on scent that I would consider buying. You know, I also tried the oh, Dapper Man. That's one that's on my list. <laughs> but I just have so many things I wanna get and so little money. I mean, and I say that and I'm fortunate that I get to try a lot of things, but there's still a lot of stuff that I wanna try that I just can't, you know, you just can't buy everything. But I will say Dapper Man is in my queue. This will be in my queue. <laughs> and so, you know, that's, that's what happens. This is another great fragrance from First line shave again, based on that, based on a uh, or inspired by, however you want to say it. And I like these type of things, honestly. Um, inspired scents do not bother me. I do like it when the artisan puts who the scent is inspired by. I think that's very, very helpful, and it gives credit, you know, where credit is due. Um, I would rather roll the dice. Oftentimes with a with a uh, fragrance, especially at you know five seventy five or five fifty an ounce, depending on if you take that dollar off for charity, whether you want to consider that. Um, I would rather roll with a, a known fragrance, you know, and something that is you know professionally perfumed. Now that said, there are many artisans in this community who who develop fantastic fragrances and they're wonderful perfumers but sometimes some of the well-regarded perfumers I don't care for their scents you know and so I have found that more than not when I get an inspired fragrance I can appreciate it almost all the time not every time but most of the time if it's something that's been popular enough to where a lot of people have enjoyed it you know it's it's good for a reason or it's popular for a reason because people enjoy it Creamy, creamy lather here. Again, very reminiscent of Kaizen, in my opinion. And I don't mean to insult First Line nor um, Pete back there when I make that comparison. Both are fine soaps. I'm just saying, to me, it behaves similarly. Um, the the uh, the creaminess of the lather is really, and the, if you look at the ingredients, they have some, you know, they have some common ingredients there. And it just, it has that sheen to it, the lather. I think the first line 3.0 base, if you are a base head, which I am not, but I will say this, this is one of the better ones that I've tried um, in addition to, to Kaizen. I definitely would put it up there. Now, I am not somebody who jumps at bases because honestly, the soaps that I have from, I have soaps as old as nearly 10 years old and they still perform just fine for me as far as, the nuts and bolts of the shave needing to do what I need them to do, right? But I find that first line, in terms of, you know, the, the basis of the day, I don't think it gets as much credit, perhaps, as it should. Because um, it's a good quality soap. I mean, it really is. And I don't hear it. I mean, I hear people loving the scent. But uh, I think this base is a very strong... In terms of what the new shavers want, which is creamy lather and 
skin food and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's not as much of interest to me, although I do like it. And I find it enjoyable to use these soaps like this that have this buttercream, as Fuzzy would call it. <laughs> all right, let's, we've been talking too much and shaving too little. And uh, what we really like to do on this channel is shave and express our enthusiasm for the hobby. So I wanna be doing shaving while I'm talking and not making super long videos. I sh effort to keep these under 20 minutes. That's always my goal. Sometimes I don't make it because I get, I get long-winded, as you know. But I hope you find value in it. And uh, this is yet another soap that for me, I found that the sample is just so valuable because I would have never purchased this soap at $5.75 an ounce without having smelled it. Let me put it to you the way the inspector oft, often phrases it. I would not purchase it scent unsniffed. And so the value of this sample is now, First Line probably has a sale. Not right now, like I said, because I have other budgetary constraints and, and things I have to do. But this is in my queue based on this sample. And guess what? There's plenty enough in here to send this to somebody else and they will too have a generous sample. And so as I've been saying in all my head shaving videos where I use, I use a lot of samples on my head shaving videos. So if you wanna see me trying things that are new or samples where I haven't bought the actual full tub, you know, check out these head shaving videos and I'm often trying things out, you know, that I haven't bought because when I buy soaps, I'm not buying them. I don't take a lot of flyers. Um, I'm buying them expecting to like them, or a lot of times I'm familiar with the fragrance or know the fragrance. Every now and then, I'll take a flyer, maybe based on the scent description or the artwork, and when I get burnt, I don't like it. <laughs> and I do get burnt sometimes. And again, I don't mean I get burnt in terms of I don't get a good quality product. What I mean is I thought I would like it, I didn't get to smell it and I just didn't like the scent based on the description. And that doesn't mean the artisan did anything wrong. It just meant what I had in my mind is not what, you know, was delivered. Now, I, my expectations could have been off. I mean, there's a thousand ways you can look at that. But I don't, I mean, who likes the feeling of going and buying something and then you don't like it, especially when we buy as much as we buy, which is, a lot, <laughs> as you know. And so we like to get hits and we don't like to strike out. I think we all are probably in that same boat um, where we're trying to get home runs every single time we buy something, especially at these soaps that are north of $20 for four ounces. That's where I really begin to tighten up. Now, if it's a soap that's, 12 to 15 bucks, I'm more likely to take a flyer just because it's not as much money. I can, in some cases, I can take two flyers with one of those, you know, and my chances of getting a hit. See, this is what it comes down to when we talk about value soaps. My chances of getting a hit increases dramatically when I'm taking a flyer on two uh, less expensive soaps. And so it also illustrates why these samples are so valuable and I really wanna thank First Line for sending these. Now, I don't know what the policies of every single artisan is in terms of uh, sending samples. So if you don't get a sample or whatever, don't blame me because I, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I'm gonna moisten, moisten <laughs> the dome there and do a little touching up. <laughs> I don't know. Um, how that's handled by every single artisan. I need to do some work here in the back, I know. Um, so I know Marion, we were having a conversation last night and he was saying that in some cases, maybe I'm getting a sample that somebody else might not have gotten. Um, and so, you know, the only thing I know is what happens with me. And so I don't mean to, I'm not trying to be deceptive or braggadocious or anything like that. So first line drops a sample in there for me. I'm, I'm very appreciative. 
And I hope that they occasionally drop a sample in for you too. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't know the policies of every single company, but I will say that I would love to see artisans doing this more often because this, both the sample and the fact that the sample for me and the fact that it's going to go to somebody else too, because I ship things to people all the time. And I just shipped, I mailed three packages Monday, I want to say. And guess what? We're in those packages to other people. Things. <laughs> Not only the things I was sending those people or they knew was coming, but also samples. And in fact, I'm quite certain I dropped Dapper Man in one of those for someone. And so samples for me are the gift that keeps giving. And I'm going to continue to mention this repeatedly, and I'm hoping that other people will also um, sort of mention the same line or just, you know, really value the artisans who are doing this. Please, I beg of you, because it means a lot to me, and I hope that it will be of value for you as well. I tell you, today, I don't know if these blades are going or what, but I'm having a hard time getting that back there, and I'm having it to go over and over and over. And I think these blades are shot, honestly. So normally what I would do is just change them out, but because I don't have to be BBS on this shave, we will just call it. Let me go ahead and rinse, we'll come back. We'll use the aftershave, and we'll tell you what we think. It will give our wrap up and uh, final thoughts, stay tuned. All right, and we're back with the magic here, made by Witches Stairs, Witch Hazel. As you know, it's just in a spray bottle here, but it's very nice. And we had a nice shave today. I did struggle a little bit. I think these uh, Derby Premium shot. <laughs> so I will definitely switch those out. The first line shave, Delmar, which you see right there. Thumbs up. Great fragrance. Um, and this sample will be going to somebody else soon to enjoy. So thank you, first line shave. Really nice quality soap. Reminds me of Kaizen and quality, good quality stuff. The PAA Amber. Uh, Aero light with the new Stygian knot. Very nice. Again, a little bit of white stuff in between there, like Marion pointed out that I didn't see, um, but not real problem. The leaf, of course, was our razor. And we're going to finish off with our first line blue, which is based on eternity, presumably for men. I just love it. <laughs> and so I bought this one when it was back in stock, and man, I love it. It takes me back to the 90s, early 90s, I want to say. Oh, that's great. Woo -hoo. Thank you, First Line, for this one. I really enjoyed purchasing this one, and thank you for the sample of Delmar. It goes on my list. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. I have been your host, CDB, and I'm reminding you, it's your shave, do it your way, and as always, God bless.